This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, look who's at my feet. Oh, yeah, Skittles. <laughs> Skittles, are you joining me for this important interview? Skittles says he's a big Pippi fan. Yes. Skittles, say hello to our guests. So cute. Yes. <laughs> Skittles, everybody thinks you're cute. Can you believe mm-hmm. that? <laughs> oh, I always have to show up my cat when he's on mm-hmm. around the video. <laughs> Folks, here we are on April the 20th, 2020. And you know what? Christmas may have been four months ago, but that doesn't mean we can't still celebrate, you know, because uh, I got my seventh guest from Secret Santa. Love this movie. God on Blu-ray here. And I advise everybody to check it out under the director of Adam Marcus. I have one of the castmates on here. Uh, thanks to uh, Curtis Fortier. Uh, a.k.a. Uncle Carter, for connecting me. I give uh, give you the person they call Pippi. Uh, some people call her Petra. Arskug. I don't know if I pronounced that right. but uh, No, you did good. You did good. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'll call you Pippi. Thank I you. like calling you Pippi. You, you, you ever get uh, called Pippi Longstocking? Oh, that's where my name is from. Oh. So, yeah. So my older brother named me Pippi before I was born. Oh. Mm-hmm. Did you ever uh, have your hair so your pigtails just go out the side of your head? Of course. Every Halloween. <laughs> Every Halloween? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm so happy, so delighted to have you, you know. And... Um, I've been talking to Adam Marcus, and even he told me you're going to be a delight. I like how you say, you probably won't be any more than five minutes. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Are you kidding me? (laughs) This will go longer than that. I'm going to do Mm -hmm. five hours with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Craig Muckler went four hours and eight minutes, so Mm -hmm. you're going to break that. Mm -hmm. No. Plant, plant, uh, uh, erase all your plans for the rest of the day. <laughs> Pippi, welcome to the show. I'm four hours. I'm four hours ahead of you here in New Brunswick, Canada. What's it like in California right now? Always sunny in California. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's warm. It's nice. We got a little bit of sun out there. We're we're getting into that spring weather here, you know. Yeah. So you're Swedish. Yes. Are you related to the Swedish chef from the Muppets? In some sort of ways, yes. <laughs> Can't deny it. <laughs> Yeah, well, watching Secret Sad, I could swear there was a there's a connection there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're in the ki- kitchen, do you do the sing along that he does? Oh, the schnooby schnoob, a little schnooby schnoob, schnoob, schnoob. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Before uh, we get the Secret Santa and any of your other projects, I would love to get some of your background and how you got into the business. Uh, well, I was born and raised in Sweden, and I started when I was 13 uh, with a group. So we were a group of people who wrote their own stuff. And so we wrote plays. So we started to do that. And then I was part of groups in school to do uh, sketches, which I liked. And then uh, I started acting in Sweden, but it wasn't like my dream. So I came here and I started at Strasbourg, went there for two years and then hopped around in classes. I had a thing like I stay maximum two years and then I move on. And then I met Adam, and since then I haven't moved on. There you go. Mm-hmm. 
How familiar were you with Adam Marcus before you met him? Had you seen Jason Goes to Hell? No. No? No. Well, you know what? I think this is his masterpiece. Mm -hmm. I think this is his masterpiece. He better have you in his next movie. Fingers crossed. (laughs) Well, I'm uh, an associate producer on this new film, Hearts of Darkness, The Making of the Final Friday. So as some kind of authority, I'm going to have to make (laughs) demands that you're part of his next project. I think so. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. I showed this to my younger brother one Christmas, and uh, he became a fan of this movie as well. I got it on Blu-ray. This is a great... uh, (laughs) <laughs> this is a crazy film, you know. It's like ready or not at Christmas time, you know. <laughs> so uh, talk about uh, first encountering Adam Marcus. How did you make that connection? Uh, word of mouth. There was somebody who was part of his theater group, mm-hmm. skeleton crew, uh, where he teach acting classes. So I went to audit his acting class and uh, never looked back. Never looked back. Yeah. Yeah. Adam's a lot of fun. I've had him on here a couple of times, you know, once with his lovely, beautiful wife, Deborah Sullivan, whom I, after this movie, I nicknamed her the Cackle Queen. (laughs) Sounds about right. He's the cackle (laughs) queen. And that name is stuck. I had her on here um, once with Adam and twice as a solo. And the last time I had her on, I got her to do the cackle. I got one out of her. (laughs) (laughs) Right on Zoom. But uh, even she's kind of accepted that. And when she she, uh, addresses me, she calls herself the cackle queen. So that's that's the nickname I give her. But <laughs> you play the hired help. You're part of the hired help. Yes. Yes, and um, you just don't get the appreciation you deserve being the hired help. In fact, you end up with uh, a Kleenex jammed up your nose. Part yes. <laughs> Was that your idea? No, Adam, of course. Yeah, you didn't come Mm -hmm. up with that? Yes, he comes up with everything. Okay, was it your idea when you're in the car to do the whole rap thing where you're moving? Yeah, yeah. That that was you? Yeah, that was me. Where did you come up with that? You know, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Because I I love it. Yeah, I just know that uh, uh, I was supposed to listen to my earphones uh-huh. and it was in the script, a rap song, which the other helper, which was my roommate, had written because he was a, 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 wanted to become a rapper in the movie. So and then I just did my dance thing, did my movements. <laughs> I love that. (laughs) You have a a, a major special effect moment in that film, you know, where um, without giving anything away, let's just say you have one hell of a major coughing fit. (laughs) Yes. Yes. How long did that take to do in terms of the makeup and the, the special effects for that? Uh, Robert Kurtzman he spent he was there with us the whole week when Mm -hmm. we filmed and I I don't know I mean it took hours just to to do paint and do and put the the whole facial things together and then whatever not to reveal anything but my coughing situation uh, those bits and parts, I guess he had worked on previously and brought them to set. And then to put everything together, uh, he kind of just walked me through what was supposed to happen and how I, what I should do. And he was right by my side as I took action and did uh, 
those uh, coughing things or what I know, <laughs> what I should call it. And we, I think we did it in two takes. You did something in two something. I'll tell you yes. <laughs> yeah. And it was in the middle of the night and it was beyond freezing cold. I remember that. I just loved it in the yeah. middle of it. You're like, you say something along the lines of, I'm okay now. <laughs> <You can't laughs> yes. <laughs> Was that in the script or was that you? No, it's in the script. That was in the script? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then Adam knows you well then. Yes, he does. Because that well, that worked perfectly. I love every <laughs> scene you're in in this movie. So <laughs> actually, I love everybody in this movie. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you're... Uh, in there you're doing your little rap thing and of course that was a great uh scene stealing moment but everybody has spoke to me who i've interviewed in this movie about the massive snowstorm to get up to big bear now we get snowstorms here you know i find it funny when i hear about snow in california but i could never been to california so so how um Early or late were you getting up there during the storm, or did you avoid it? <clears throat> I wasn't the latest. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> I was driving up with Michelle. Brene? Uh, yes. I love her. Yes. So we were in the same car. So yeah, we had we had basically we had to wait to get up the hill. We were already prepared with the snow change and everything. And then we started to get some phone calls from Deb wondering where we were. And we were like soon, 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 soon. Uh, but we had to wait because they had some traffic guards that only let few people at the time drive up. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm from Sweden. Uh, I, I'm i used to snow. It doesn't feel like such a huge deal to me, but there there was a lot of snow. You should try so. living here in the wintertime. Yeah. <laughs> so how many times did uh, Michelle make you get out and push? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I think you need to ask her that. <laughs> Tell me, uh, everybody denies this, but I don't believe it. Mm. How many times did you guys make snowman up there on set? I actually don't think we did. Everybody says that. I don't buy that. Not from you guys. No, but you have to think like we were shooting nighttime and daytime. It was, yeah, no, no. No time for a snowman? No. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I heard Pat Destro's house got uh, redecorated, so to speak, and making this movie. Were you involved in that? I think they have done everything when we came up at that point. They had had all those events with no electricity, everything going wrong. So I think yeah, me and Michelle, were, we were fort very fortunate that we came, that the most of the obstacles had been solved. Well, you were part of the hired help, yes. taking all the criticism and all that. And, and uh, you were, I'm trying to think of the two gentlemen, Freddie uh, James was one, let me see. And Ed, Eddie. Eddie. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I want to make sure I get their names right here. But uh, you worked, what was it like working with them? Great. So much fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know them both from before. And actually me and Freddie, mm -hmm. uh, we met through a skeleton crew and his, his acting class too. So we've been in the same class for, for a very long time. And uh, and Freddie was also uh, doing all the stunts. So yeah. He was, yeah. So he was helping me also a lot with, I have 
<clears throat> some parts in the kitchen when I fall back on the stove and I get punched. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say it. Well, he helped me with uh, many stamps. Let's leave it at that. Well, <laughs> I did. I did mention away everything. <laughs> I did mention you had Kleenex jammed up your nose through yeah. part of the movie, so well, that happened somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, working with Adam sounds like it's a lot of fun. But talk about working with the Cackle Queen. The Cackle Queen? Oh, yeah. she's, she, she's amazing. Uh, we didn't really share any scenes, uh, but uh, she is super professional and she was so prepared. And I'm all, I, she's carried the heavy weight of this movie and she has a lot of lines and we didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this. I don't know how she did it. I really don't. She's the Cackle Queen. Yeah, but the, that, that that was a lot, a lot of things to memorize and quick. But she got it. She did it. And I think also because she have done a lot of theater. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's very good at that. Talk about working with Pat Destro. Destro. I, I know that um, you guys certainly shared a scene together. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was amazing. And, and her, uh, it's very hard to talk about his movie without giving away all the goodies. But what Robert Kurtzman did to her face, it's outstanding. If you remember the car scene and uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You must have been warmer than she was because you were inside the car. You know what? I don't <laughs> think so. There was no heater in the car, uh, but maybe because I'm a Swede, I could handle the cold a tad, tad better. They brought they brought a car up there that didn't have a heater in it. <laughs> no, but, no, we didn't have a heater on, and uh, and also uh, now I lost my thought. You're talking about heaters and cars that mm -hmm. aren't there. <laughs> Yes, they aren't there. But uh, we were dressed. I mean, I had a layer under my 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 performing clothes. So mm -hmm. we were we were layered. And Deb have bought us all those hot pads to put in our shoes. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know you did not uh, work closely with everybody, but I know we lost John Gilbert not too long ago. Um, did you have any uh, recollection of him on set? Yeah. I didn't know what was going on with him previous to this movie. So for me, it was kind, kind of a shock. Uh, I know that Drew and Ryan and Adam, of course, and Deb and the people who were workly close and had scenes with him, took an immense time to help him in writing lines and paperboards and everything for him to, to remember his lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. So... I mean, he was great. He when was. You see, you see the movie, you would never, ever guess what was going on. Oh, jeepers. Even that first scene at the door between him and uh, yeah. Deborah Sullivan is great. You know, he's just very commanding and, uh, you know, <laughs> head of the family. Yeah. I remember that scene so well because we had, when we edited that part, we had to work around obstacles, but it was when we shot it. I I remember Ryan was standing there with a board with the lines, and we're trying to feed him the lines yeah. because he couldn't he couldn't remember. Yeah. Ryan Seaton, I've have haven't had on here yet, but he he like yourself was one of the people that uh, Curtis had put me in touch with. Um, um, 
Brian, I have not been able to schedule, but she is open to coming on the show. We had did have a phone conversation, and uh, she wasn't uh, around any punch bowls when I was talking to her. <laughs> there will be none of that. Hmm. There will be none of that kind of behavior during the interview. <laughs> Ryan is really great in this movie, and she gets to um, – because there's a couple of John Carpenter references in this film, one involving Halloween and the other involving The Thing – both of which uh, Ryan gets to, to perform. And um, I'm going to mention some of these names to you and um, just give me a little recollection on set. Ryan, for example. Ryan Seaton. Mm -hmm. Your recollection of her. Uh, we didn't have any shared scenes. I mean, I only mm -hmm. had a small little part in the movie. Uh, she's also super professional, and uh, you would totally enjoy having her on the show. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's some fantastic scenes, and her character is at the dinner scene, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, quite outstanding. And also she had some amazing scenes, not also again with Freddie and uh, another girl who helped to do the stunt for her in the end of the movie. Yep. Drew Lynch. Recollections of Drew Lynch. I think we all... <laughs> <laughs> we all remember one scene and that's the scene when he has his screaming point i would say oh yeah he's he great has, in there he's yeah. great there <laughs> we and we have some takes that didn't make it to the movie we couldn't stop laughing i mean it was hilarious and he was so good and every time he delivered oh it was yeah we had such a great time with him <laughs> And of course, Michael Rady was known for a lot of uh, Hallmark movies. And here he got to play kind of against that, you know. I, th I like the casting of him, you know. It's like Adam was taking the whole Hallmark version of him and um, spicing, it, spicing it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't think what's going to happen happens. I heard he was like the last one to make it up there during the snowstorm, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, not only I, he had some mishap with, with the little car that he, we needed that Ryan drives in the beginning of the movie yeah. when she listened to some very heavy metal music driving up. Yeah. So he, he couldn't, I think the car stopped working all of a sudden or something. So there was a few hours at least in delay. <laughs> Speaking of music, Tim Eilers I've had on here. He added so much to this movie with the music, you know. Yes. I, I'm, I had him on here because uh, the stuff he did with it stood out to me. Yeah. Yep, provided a lot of mood, and I love the heavy metal stuff, I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, no, he's super talented, and he worked closely with Adam, and I think, I don't know how much, how many files of music we got, and Adam was like, oh, wow, this is good, this is good, this is good, and then we put it, mm. and then Adam can just go like, no, there's one little sound there, can you change it, Tim? And then he changed it. Oh, that was perfect. We got to talk about Uncle Carter, Curtis. Curtis. Yes, yeah. because I had, did see the music video that you and he did together. <laughs> where you two are just going right manic in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Before... Talk about doing that music video. Uh, I, we were just goofing around. Actually, I don't know how. Oh, yes, yes. So 
there, uh, we were, I did another web series. So mm -hmm. the director for that, uh, we're going to direct a music video. Mm -hmm. So he asked me and Curtis to, to be a couple and be a goofy couple. And we were, and we were just having fun. <laughs> Too much fun, I think. Oh, it worked. <laughs> I think he sent that to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I watched it. And I was like, oh, this is terrific. <laughs> Curtis had some great lines in Secret Santa. I loved that, that first scene at the house where he goes, um, he comes out of the washroom and says, um, I was botched up something awful or something like that. And uh, I said, the perfectly the wrong thing to say at a family gathering <laughs> yes yes when you come upstairs and before pat and debbie go to the the famous little punch bowl that's right yeah i remember at the table he was saying you know uh, where he was talking about he was talking about paris and lesbians <laughs> and I, I I said to Curtis, I said, and I said this to Adam, I said, Adam, you need to do the uh, the Uncle Carter with lesbians in Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, Curtis said, that's a movie where everybody wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he's down for that. I love Michelle Renee Allaire. I've had her on here a couple times, and uh, she was the star of the movie. <laughs> and yeah. I put star in quotes for a reason. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, that was a big surprise. Um, and of course, she did a she did a nude scene in the movie, and I heard the story about. Poor A. Leslie Kyes have to be under that bed in order to get. <laughs> I mean, you're small. You could have done that. You could have crawled under the bed. <laughs> What'd you do? Run and hide? You ran and hide? <laughs> but, yeah, but... yeah that, that was a great scene. And uh, actually, we had a lot of fun editing that scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Adam was, we were changing the music and it's, we, we just had fun with it. So mm -hmm. depending on what song he put on, it became a totally different scene. Well, you know, I love it when uh, Michelle and Nathan end up in that big fist fight towards <laughs> towards the climax of the movie. It's one of my favorite scenes. And of course, he's saying, uh, he keeps saying, I'm getting harder every time he's, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> and she, she just lets him have it. And I'm like, oh, I love this. I love Michelle. <laughs> Everybody yeah. needs a Michelle. And she spoke to me about her restaurant. Have you gone to her restaurant? Yes, many times. Yep. yep. She, she spoke to me about that as well. I am I know she was involved with a charity called Barks and Bitches. And I'm trying to figure out how to give to that charity because she was going to respond to one of my charities. And um, <laughs> I can't find out how you donate to it. But, but nonetheless... Um, uh, I had her on, and she was absolutely wonderful. And uh, so is there any, um, of course, I have Will Dixon on here, too. I can't forget him. You didn't work with him, though, but he was next no. door. He was next door. He was, yeah. I told him, don't ever answer the door again. <laughs> no more answering the door, unless it's yeah. you and unless it's you and Curtis. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah you and Curtis you know that'd be amusement <laughs> yeah I remember when Will came up he can't he he wasn't there from the beginning of the shoot because we were shooting his scene towards the end <clears throat> and uh, yeah he came up in the middle of the night uh, when we were shooting there's one scene where me and Eddie 
runs in the back of the house to look for the key. Yep. That's, yes, that's that's when uh, Will Dixon arrived to the set. I remember that. And he was like, wow, this is so good. This is so cool. <laughs> what a great guy. I had so much fun yeah. interviewing him. And uh, we got to touch on uh, A. Leslie Kyes because she was kind of the centerpiece yes. at the table, trying to bring everybody together and failing miserably. <laughs> you, what were your memories of her? You know, I, I actually, I mean, she worked nonstop, but again, I didn't have a scene with her and we didn't stay in the same house. What uh, house did you stay in? I stayed in the back house with Michelle. Okay. Yeah. And did you put a sign on the door saying no Nathan allowed? <laughs> <laughs> so we only shared like uh, breakfast and dinners. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course I saw her work all the time and she's also super professional. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I mean, since this was so long time ago now, uh, a lot of my memories go into the editing room and to the footage. Mm -hmm. So I just love her ending scene in the room in the morning when she wakes up. It's spectacular. And talk, yeah. Talk about your last day on the set. My last day. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, you know, I don't really have any. You see, I don't know how they could send you home. <laughs> uh, no, because we left and then they went back again to shoot uh, some additional footage for some when with the grandma and the car scenes. Mm -hmm. So they were not done. Uh, our rap, uh, I, I don't even know if it was with the last scene when uh, Ryan have her big uh, little landing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was so intense. Like, it was such a short and tight schedule. And it felt like we did so much. So it would, you would think it was longer, but it was really short. And then it was over and it was like, oh my God. So um, are you going to be involved in any of Adam's future projects? Like I know he's got one called Fat Camp Massacre coming up. Now I know about this because uh, he had told me he's going to have Lindsay Hollister starring in it. I've had Lindsay on here a couple times, you know, I think she's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, she was in the Uva Bull movie, Postal, and, and uh, movies like that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Fat Cat Massacre, especially judging from what he described the premise as. Are you going to be in that? I don't know. Yeah, after I get done talking to him, I'm going to hold it over his head. <laughs> Let's see where he can put his weed. <laughs> I'm going to tell him, I said, you got no choice. <laughs> the power of New Brunswick <laughs> compounds you. <laughs> you have some other films I want to uh, talk about. Now, a lot of these I have not seen, but I want to ask you about them because I read about these and uh let me see there we go got got your imdb you got one that grabbed my attention the midnight screening describe that and uh talk about that project because uh it's about people in line for a, a midnight screening yeah yeah, that was a project that i met a director when i went to film school mm -hmm. Uh, it's a, just it's a short little scene that I'm part of. It was one of his first feature movies. Um, I think it, I played a Swede. You play a Swede? Yes, I played a Swede. 
<laughs> you were tight casted. Yes. <laughs> we need to get you in a scene with the Swedish chef from the Muppets. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, most of the things. Um, actually, I don't play mostly sweets. I think I play from the things I've done mostly Russians mm -hmm. or Ger or Germans. Okay. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. No. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I read the synopsis for the midnight screening and I'm like, I can relate to this being in lineup to go to a midnight screening because I love midnight movies, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are those are a lot of fun. Um, you were in The Harsh Life of Veronica Lambert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Memories? Uh, yeah, that was also a feature film where I played a, an Israeli lesbian. Uh, <laughs> it was a pretty dramatic thriller, but my part was a uh, comic, comic relief. I would say. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we we uh, that movie was shot here in Los Angeles. Mm hmm. And what was the other one I was going to ask you about? Oh, you were in one. You played Sandra in Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nothing good to say about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, what about Back Home Again? Oh, that was fun. Uh, that was a movie where I got to go to Minneapolis. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I got that part through a friend, through a friend, through a friend that I auditioned. And it's also a comic part. And, I, think, I think people find you funny. And yeah, there, there is a part uh, where I'm a Swede and I'm looking to a window and... <clears throat> I get stuck, you know how in Dumb and Dumber, he gets stuck with the thong on the... Yep. On the, yes, I had yep. that thing, but with my upper body stuck to a window. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty, pretty crazy scene. Did you have a stretching seam where they had to pull you off like he did with his tongue? No, they didn't do that. They did more like a, they did more like a sound effect when I fell off the window. <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed uh, the woman from the opening scene in Dumb and Dumber, the, uh, the Austrian woman at the bus stop. I had her on the show. I saw that film at the theater when it came out and i'm gonna tell you there were some laugh out loud scenes in that movie i remember it well at an old theater that was here so what's up in the future for pippy i don't know i don't know besides that i'm gonna bombard adam marcus yeah. with uh, messages to cast you in more films yeah i don't know and uh, i am not a writer so i don't write my own things and so I, I have ideas. So if nobody execute those ideas, I depend on uh, what's happening through auditions, I would say. So I, li I, yeah. I like funny women. So <laughs> that's why I had to have you come on here. Thank you. <laughs> what, um, do you have any charities that you're involved in that you want to plug and promote on here? Not for the moment, but I will let you know. Because I'm so tempted to throw mm -hmm. one of mine out to you. Yes, do it. Do yeah. It. The, why? Because uh, you're too friggin' funny. Not and to I have it. I'm going to write it down. Okay. Yes. Well, this is a charity challenge mm -hmm. for suicide and depression awareness. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of my guests do this. In fact, uh, I told Michelle Renee Allaire I'd make a donation to Barks and Bitches if I could figure out how to do that. 
because their web page <laughs> is not their web page is not uh, certainly not a roadmap to that. But mm -hmm. Michelle said she's down for this, and so I need to figure out how to make that donation so I can get her to do it. But but it's called the Doubt Fire Face Challenge. Okay. Yep, for suicide and depression awareness after we lost Robin Williams. And it involves you videoing yourself, you take a pie in the face, and you nominate three people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can't resist throwing this at you because <laughs> you're freaking funny. <laughs> okay. Can I eat the pie after? Sure, go for it. <laughs> All right. But here's what I will do. If you have a charity, something that's dear to you, I'll make a donation to that in return. That's something I generally do. Okay. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I do this. I'm trying to get the industry involved like they were the ice bucket challenge. Mm -hmm. And I just lost my dad to ALS back in April 5th. So, uh, oh, I'm um, sorry. yeah, well, he's not suffering anymore. Yeah. You know, he battled it for eight years, and that's way beyond oh, what they yeah, say. Oh, yeah, long time. Yeah. But uh, I'm not surprised he battled it longer than they said because my dad was a pretty strong person. But um, but uh, when the Ice Bucket Challenge is so successful, it was like, what other charities could they – could this be something great for charities? And then uh, when Robin Williams had passed, this one came up because they had that scene in Mrs. Doubtfire where – he has to disguise himself quick so he sticks his face in the cake <laughs> and i've had a number of my guests do this you know actually even leah thompson from pack to the future did it i threw it out to her on cameo so um so if you're down for something like that i um i would love to see that and i put okay. it on my uh my channel and uh and uh nominate three people all right. Yep. <laughs> it's been thrown out to Adam and Deborah, and they told me they're down for it. So, uh, yeah. So maybe we're going to have a little pie war, the three of us. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We went longer. We went longer than five minutes. Yes, we did. Did I not tell you? <laughs> <laughs> that we're go go longer than five minutes you did yeah you did and you're at, you're every bit the delight that adam and deborah and uh curtis and everybody said you were going to be thank you yeah i mean uh it's too bad i, I mean i i've got Kleenex here you know but <laughs> You know, it uh, doesn't do me any good to stick mm -hmm. it up my nose. You're supposed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had, I mean, it's, it's strange in a way because it's so many years ago that we did it, but it's, it's uh, just talking about it. I remember so many things and it brings back so many funny memories and good memories. This was my introductory to you and so many other people from this film. And uh, I knew Adam from Jason Goes to Hell. But I got to say this. I want to see him do more of this. I enjoyed this so much. And I watched it every Christmas since. And uh, showed it to my brother and he had last with it. And uh, it's so much fun. And I think, yeah, you're my seventh guest from the film. I'm trying to get more people to see this. I, and I think that's a movie. The more you see it, the more things you see and hear. Because it moves pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's new discoveries for every time you watch. Well, you were one of the many discoveries I made from this movie, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Now, is there any um, uh, social media or web pages that you want to plug on here where people can reach you? 
Uh, I only have my IMDb. Mm -hmm. So I can give that to you. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to pester Adam, put you more movies. That's right. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to tell him to get the rights for the Muppets so he can have you do a scene with the Swedish <laughs> chef. You got, you got to do a scene with the Swedish chef. Yeah, I like to do those uh, crazy scenes. The crazier, the better. Have you ever gotten to do the conventions yet or anything like that? Like the fan conventions, you ever get to do those? Uh, no, uh, we went, we did a few things actually with Secret Santa mm -hmm. down in Staples Center and uh, yeah, a few places we did, but most of it's Adam been doing, Adam and Deb. Well, do you, here's a question I asked everybody. What's the most unique thing you've ever been asked to sign? It hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. No. You only, haven't had only signed a headshot or posters. Okay. Yeah. You haven't signed anybody's uh, body part where they tattoo your name on them? No. I hear that well, one. A prob lot. Probably Michelle has, but not me. <laughs> well before i let you go i got two two things number one do the rapper thing do the rapper thing do it do it oh i think i did something like that oh, 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 oh. yeah oh. <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> and um number two before i let you go would you mind doing a plug for my show what do you mean? Well, I'm just going to ask you to state your name and that you're in Secret Santa. Yes. And say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Yeah, you're going to write that down, huh? Greg? Yeah, I remember your name. Yeah? Yeah, Greg yeah. Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> on Python? Python's Paradise. Python like the snake. Yeah. And uh, how did you come up with Python's Paradise? Well, I always liked uh, African wildlife and I've always liked snakes. So I thought Python would be a good DJ name. You know, it kind of came to me after watching American Graffiti one night with the uh, Wolfman Jack sequence with Richard Dreyfus, And I just love the mysteriousness of the, uh, the scene. So I thought Python. And, and um, the paradise part came from to me one night. I was watching Brian De Palma's The Phantom of the Paradise. And it's like, well, to me, watching movies is kind of a paradise for me. So, like Secret Santa. There you go. Yeah. Do you got this on Blu ray yet? Of course. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's a traditional Christmas event now, every Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. What's your family think of your uh, performance in this? Well, nothing that surprised them. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have you be the hired help at their uh, uh, events? They could only wish. They could only wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I loved you in this movie. We'll get you to do your plug now. Thank you. Go for it. Thank you so much for having me here, Gilbert, at uh, Greg Gilbert Python's Paradise. And it was so nice to talk to you and uh, interview me for Secret Santa, the movie. And my name is Petra or Pippi Eriskog. <laughs> Eriskog. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'd never heard that pronounce, pronunciation of that. Or R school. R school. <laughs> oh, you don't even know how to pronounce your own name. <laughs> oh, but how can I know, you know? Yeah, we can't. Let's just say Pippi. Pippi. Longstocking. Pippi Longstocking. I grew mm -hmm. up with Pippi Longstocking. Mm -hmm. I never passed French growing up. Never. But one of the things that our French teacher used to do is play 
either movies or TV shows in French. And he used to play Pippi Longstocking. Because I remember it was called Fifi in French. Fifi. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Do you do you have a pair of boots like uh, Pippi Longstocking? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, have the, I have the socks. I have the whole enchilada. <laughs> do you ever wear them at Skeleton Crew events? Uh, only on Halloween. Only on Halloween? Yeah. <laughs> do you freak... I have a little monkey too. You have a little monkey? Yeah. A real one or a fake one? No, a fake one. A fake one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I got one too, only he's a cat. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's, <laughs> he's hidden now because I am, I am, I exploited him on here. Yeah. <laughs> for his. Uh. He, he stays here for free, so I got him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad to be connected with you on Facebook. And uh, when this is ready, I will send it to you. You could put it up. And uh, yeah, I'd love to have you back again sometime, you know, when you get more projects. I'm going to pester yes. Adam. Thank you. I'm going to pester him to get you more stuff. Yeah, do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank Pippi. you. Thank I you. loved having you on here. I knew you were going to be a delight. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And yeah, so, so nice to talk with you finally. You know what? I'm glad that we made it happen. And uh, let me know when you get your Doubtfire Face Challenge done. And um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. Bye bye. God bless. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.